Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to lecture number 14 of the course on statistics and probability. Students, you will recall that in the last lecture, I discussed with you in detail the box and whisker plot. And towards the end of the lecture, I discussed the Pearson's coefficient of skewness. As you will remember, the Pearson's coefficient of skewness is defined as mean minus mode over the standard deviation. And in those situations where the mode is not very easily found, we can apply the empirical relation between the mean, median, and the mode. And in that situation, the formula for the Pearson's coefficient becomes 3 times mean minus median over the standard deviation. Sawal ye peda hota hai ke ye jo numerator hai 3 times mean minus median isko hum standard deviation se kyun divide karte hain? Students, iski waja ye hai ke if you only consider the distance between the mean and the median and you multiply it by 3, the answer that you will get will be in the same units as the units of the data itself. But when we divide it by the standard deviation, we get a pure number. And now we are in a position to compare the skewness of any one distribution with the skewness of another distribution. Because, as I have told you in the lecture, mein bata chuki hun, um, a pure number can be compared with a pure number. Lekin, for example, if agar ek distribution mein pounds hain aur dusri distribution mein inches hain, to pounds cannot be compared with inches in a very proper way. So, as you noticed, um, the Pearson's coefficient of skewness requires the computation of the mean as well as the standard deviation. Now, if you want to measure the skewness of a distribution, without having to compute the mean and the standard deviation, there is another formula and that is the one given by Baule. This formula students is based on the median and the quartiles. And these are of course measures of partition and these also enable us to measure the skewness in a very interesting way. Is silsile mein Sabse pehle samajhne ki baat ye hai ke for an absolutely symmetric distribution, the distance between the median and the first quartile is exactly the same as the distance between the median and the third quartile. But in case of a positively skewed distribution, the distance between the median and the third quartile is longer than the distance between the median and the first quartile as you now see on the screen. So, if I subtract x tilde minus q1 from q3 minus x tilde students, I will obtain a positive answer as you now see on the screen. q3 minus the median minus median minus q1 is the same thing as q1 plus q3 minus 2 times the median. And as I just explained, in case of a positively skewed distribution, this quantity will be greater than 0. Exactly the opposite situation prevails in case of a negatively skewed distribution. In this case, the distance between q1 and x tilde is more than the distance between x tilde and q3. And if you subtract x tilde minus q1 from q3 minus x tilde, you will obtain a negative answer. q3 minus the median minus median minus q1 is again the same thing as q1 plus q3 minus 2 times the median and because of the fact that in this case median minus q1 is 
greater than q3 minus median hence the quantity q1 plus q3 minus 2 times the median comes out to be less than 0 to is tarah se aapne dekha ke quartiles and the median also provide a way of determining the skewness of your distribution aap q1 plus q3 minus 2 times x tilde compute kar le if it is a positive quantity it indicates that the distribution is positively skewed and vice versa but students the bowles coefficient is given by as you now see on the screen q1 plus q3 minus 2x tilde divided by q3 minus q1 iski wajah ye hai that when we divide the numerator by q3 minus q1 once again we obtain a number which is unitless a pure number and hence we are able to compare the skewness of one distribution with another another important point is that it has been mathematically shown that this coefficient that i have just presented to you lies between minus 1 and plus 1 so jab aap apne data set ke liye ye coefficient compute kare the closer it is to minus 1 the greater will be the skewness in the negative direction and the closer it is to plus 1 the greater will be the skewness in the positive direction or agar aapka answer 0 ke bahut nazdeek positive ya negative ho to iska matlab ye hai ke your distribution is approximately symmetric let us apply this concept to the example of the ages of the children of the manual and non manual workers that we discussed in the last lecture as you will recall we had data regarding the age of onset of nervous asthma in children and we had this information for the children of manual workers and the children of non manual workers also we had computed various sample statistics pertaining to the ages of these children and we had the figures that you now see on the screen first let us concentrate on the distribution of the ages of the children of the manual workers now because q1 is equal to 6.0 x tilde is equal to 8.5 and q3 is equal to 11.0 you will realize that the distance between q1 and x tilde is exactly the same as the distance between x tilde and q3 and this leads to the symmetric picture that you now see on the screen on the other hand the situation of the ages of the children of the non manual workers is quite different q1 is equal to 5.5 x tilde is equal to 9.2 and q3 is equal to 10.8 and this implies that the distance between q1 and x tilde is much greater than the distance between x tilde and q3 and this leads to a negatively skewed picture that you now see on the screen so jitni discussion humne abhi tak ki usse to yahi nazar aa raha hai na ke the distribution of the children of the manual workers is symmetric and the distribution of the ages of the children of the non manual workers is negatively skewed agar hum in dono data sets ke liye bowles coefficient of skewness compute kare to as you see on the screen the coefficient comes out to be 0 for the children of the manual workers and for the children of the non manual workers it comes out to be minus 0.37 and 
The negative answer indicates that the distribution of the children of the non-manual workers is indeed negatively skewed. Students, the next concept that I am going to discuss with you is the concept of kurtosis. This term was introduced by Carl Pearson and it literally means the amount of hump in your distribution. In other words, this is the concept of the peakedness or the flatness of your distribution. Students, when the values in your data set are closely bunched around the mode, we say that the distribution is leptocurtic and it is a relatively high peaked distribution as you now see on the screen. On the other hand, if the curve is flat topped, we say that the curve is platycurtic. Students, the normal curve is a curve which is neither very peaked nor very flat and this is the one which is taken as a basis for comparison. The normal curve itself is called a mesocurtic distribution and it is like a bell-shaped curve as you now see on the screen. Students, the concept of the normal distribution is of the utmost importance in the theory of statistics and I will discuss this concept with you in a lot of detail when we discuss probability distributions. Is work aap sirf itni baat zehen mein rakhiye ke wo curve jo na bohat zyada peaked hai na hi bohat flat hai balke it is of a moderate amount of hump and a beautiful bell shaped curve that is the kind that is called the normal distribution. Superimposing the three curves on the same graph we get a picture as the one that you now see. The leptocurtic curve is the tallest one, the mesocurtic is the intermediate one and the platycurtic is the flat topped distribution. Students, um, peakedness ya kurtosis ka concept to maine aapke saath discuss kar liya. Ab agla sawal ye hai ki hum is degree of peakedness ko measure kis tarah karenge. As you now see on the screen, there is a formula which involves the quartiles and the percentiles and it is known as the percentile coefficient of kurtosis. It is defined as quartile deviation divided by P90 minus P10. Students, this measure of kurtosis is denoted by K and for the mesocurtic distribution which is neither very peaked nor flat, its value comes out to be 0.263. Also, this measure, its value can range from 0 to 0 0.5 and for a leptocurtic distribution, it is less than 0 0.263, lies somewhere between 0 and 0 0.263 and for the platycurtic distribution, it is greater than 0 0.263. In other words, lies somewhere between 0 0.263 and 0 0.5. I'm sure that you will understand that the closer your answer is to 0 0.263, the closer your curve will be to the normal curve. All right, the next concept that I am going to discuss with you students is a very important concept and I would like to encourage you to listen to it and to study it very carefully. This is the concept of moments. What do I mean by moments? A moment designates the power to which deviations are raised before averaging them. I know, ye to bohat hi mushkil malum ho raha hai. 
let me explain this to you bit by bit. मैंने आपसे अभी जो बात की इसमें दो तीन टर्म्स इन्वॉल्व हुई आइए सबसे पहले हम जो टर्म डिविएशन है उस पर गौर करते हैं जब हम कहते हैं कि वी वी आर टेकिंग द डिविएशन ऑफ द एक्स वैल्यूज फ्रॉम अ सर्टन वैल्यू तो इसका सिंपली ये मफहूम होता है दैट वी आर कंसिडरिंग द डिफरेंस बिटवीन आवर एक्स वैल्यूज एंड दैट पर्टिकुलर वैल्यू सो अगर हम कहें डिविएशन फ्राम द मीन तो इसका सिंपली ये मतलब है दैट वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द कॉलम दैट वी माइट हैव ऑफ x माइनस एक्स बार यानी अगर हमारे पास 10 x वैल्यूज़ हैं और उनका हम मीन कंप्यूट कर चुके हैं तो उसके बाद हम 10 अदद डिविएशन मेजर कर सकते हैं एंड दे विल बी डिनोटेड बाय x माइनस एक्स बार फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ दी इफ दी एक्स वैल्यूज आर वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन एट नाइन एंड टेन तो इनका मीन क्या होगा फाइव पॉइंट फाइव और जब हम डिविएशन की बात कर रहे हैं तो हम क्या कह रहे हैं वन माइनस फाइव पॉइंट फाइव टू माइनस फाइव पॉइंट फाइव थ्री माइनस फाइव पॉइंट फाइव एंड सो ऑन ये तो हुई पहली बात अब मैंने आपसे कहा था कि मोमेंट क्या चीज़ है द पावर अ सर्टन पावर टू विच द डिविएशन आर रेस्ड बिफोर एवरेजिंग देम अगर हम ये जो दस डिविएशन मैंने अभी आपसे बात की अगर हम इनकी फर्स्ट पावर लें और उसके बाद उन सब को सम करें और नंबर ऑफ डिविएशन से डिवाइड कर दें तो दिस विल बी द फर्स्ट मोमेंट अबाउट द मीन एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्क्रीन द फर्स्ट मोमेंट अबाउट द मीन इज गिवन बाय सिग्मा एक्स माइनस एक्स बार रेस टू वन डिवाइडेड बाय एन और जाहिर है कि रेस टू वन लिखने की तो कोई ज़रूरत ही नहीं है लिहाजा वी कैन से दैट द फर्स्ट मोमेंट about the mean is equal to sigma x minus x bar over n lekin shayad aapko yaad ho ke in an earlier lecture i said to you that the sum of the deviations of the observations from the mean is always equal to zero aur is example mein jo maine abhi aapke sath discuss ki isme bhi aap dekhiye ki aisa hi hoga 1 माइनस फाइव पॉइंट फाइव इज माइनस फोर पॉइंट फाइव और वो जो लास्ट वैल्यू है 10, 10 माइनस फाइव पॉइंट फाइव इज फोर पॉइंट फाइव इसी तरह 2 माइनस फाइव पॉइंट फाइव इज माइनस थ्री पॉइंट फाइव बट नाइन माइनस फाइव पॉइंट फाइव इज थ्री पॉइंट फाइव तो वो आपकी ऊपर वाली डिविएशंस नेगेटिव हैं और नीचे वाली डिविएशंस पॉजिटिव हैं और जब आप ऐड कर रहे हैं तो आपका सम जो है That is zero. If sigma x minus x bar is equal to zero, then it is obvious that the first moment about the mean will also be zero. Students, is first moment ko ham m one se denote karte hain, and this is a small m, and this is of course the situation when we are dealing with sample data. Agar ham पूरी पॉपुलेशन से डेटा कलेक्ट करें और फिर ये चीज़ें कंप्यूट करें तो हमारी जो नोटेशन होगी दैट विल बी म्यू वन फॉर द फर्स्ट मोमेंट म्यू टू फॉर द सेकंड एंड सो ऑन अभी मैंने सेकंड मोमेंट की बात की स्टूडेंट्स सेकंड मोमेंट से मेरी क्या मुराद है अकॉर्डिंग टू दी डेफिनेशन दैट आई गेव अलियर we are talking about the power to which the deviations have to be raised before averaging them so if i talk about m2 the second moment about the mean it is given by sigma x minus x bar whole square over n students ye formula jo aapne abhi screen pe dekha ye to koi naya formula hi nahi hai Do you not remember the variance? 
when you squared the deviations of the x values from the mean, found their sum and divided by n. Yes, indeed, the second moment about the mean is exactly the same thing as the variance. And if you take the positive square root of this quantity, then of course you obtain the standard deviation. Now that I have discussed the first and second moments, students, we are in a position to formally define the rth moment about the mean. The rth moment about the mean is the arithmetic mean of the rth power of the deviations of the observations from the mean. Symbolically, mr is equal to sigma x minus x bar whole raised to r over n. These are moments These are moments about the mean and students, they are also called central moments. But then we can define moments in another way as well. Ye zaruri to nahi hai ki aap mean hi subtract kare. It can be any arbitrary value or it can be the number zero. So let me define for you the moments about an arbitrary value alpha. As you now see on the screen, the rth moment about an arbitrary origin alpha is given by m dash r is equal to sigma x minus alpha whole raised to r divided by n. Students, aapne note kiya ke ab jo moment maine define kiya, uske liye maine notation istemal ki hai m dash r. Yehi basic fark hai between the moments about the mean and the moments about any other arbitrary value. We will denote the moments about the mean by mr and the moments about arbitrary value by m dash r. Ab se kuch ter pehle, maine aapke saath discuss kiya that the first moment about the mean is equal to zero. Now let us consider what the first moment about alpha will be equal to. As you now see on the screen, the first moment about alpha is equal to sigma x minus alpha over n. And if we open the bracket, we obtain sigma x over n minus alpha, which is equal to x bar minus alpha. So this is a simple relationship between the first moment about alpha and the arithmetic mean x bar. Isi tara, we can develop a number of relationships and a short while later, I will be discussing with you formally certain relationships that exist between moments about the mean and moments about A and relationships which are very useful in computing the moments that we require. Lekin isse pehle, mein aapke saath moments about arbitrary origin ka ek special case discuss karna chaati. Students, if you put alpha equal to zero, you obtain what we call moments about zero or moments about the origin. And as you now see on the screen, the rth moment about zero will be equal to sigma x raised to r over n. Obviously, if we put alpha equal to zero in our basic expression for m dash r, the quantity x minus alpha will become simply x and the formula will become sigma x raised to r over n. Is may aap ek point ye bhi note kare ke jab mein moments about alpha ki baat kar rahi thi, I said moments about an arbitrary origin. Aur jab maine alpha ko zero put kiya, to maine kaha moments about the origin. Ab aap jante hi hain 
कि अगर आप एक ग्राफ पेपर को विजुलाइज करें तो जो पॉइंट ज़ीरो एक्स इक्वल टू ज़ीरो और वाई इक्वल टू ज़ीरो को रिप्रेजेंट करता है उसे हम ऑरिजिन ही कहते हैं सो so, इस हवाले से मोमेंट्स अबाउट ज़ीरो आर आल्सो कॉल्ड मोमेंट्स अबाउट द ऑरिजिन ऑल राइट लेट अस अप्लाई द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ मोमेंट्स टू अ सिंपल एग्जाम्पल एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्क्रीन सपोज वी हैव डेटा regarding the examination marks of just 9 students and the marks are 45 32 37 and so on if we desire to compute the first four moments about the mean for this data the first step of course is to find the arithmetic mean and once we have done that we will construct the columns of x minus x bar x minus x bar whole square x minus x bar whole cubed and x minus x bar whole raised to 4 dividing the sums of these columns by the total number of observations we will obtain m1 m2 m3 and m4 the important point to note is that the second moment is expressed in square units the third moment is expressed in the cubes of the units and the fourth moment in the fourth powers of the units so that in this example since we are dealing with the marks of the students hence we say that m2 is equal to 25.78 marks squared similarly m3 is equal to 20.67 marks cubed and so on students aapne note kiya that i computed the first four moments aur aapke zehen mein yakeenan ye sawal aayega ke what about the fifth sixth and so on actually agar hum is tarah se chale to there will be no end to it because obviously r can be given any value but a very interesting and important point to note is that the first four moments about the mean contain a lot of useful information regarding our data set is bare mein mazid baat main aapke sath kuch der ke baad karungi filhal i would like to discuss with you the formula of the moments in the case of grouped data अभी हमने जो फार्मूले किए ऑफ कोर्स दे वर फॉर द केस ऑफ द रॉ डेटा एंड इफ वी हैव ग्रुप डेटा दैट इज अ फ्रीक्वेंसी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन स्टूडेंट्स द फार्मूलाई विल बी वेरी सिमिलर टू द केस ऑफ द रॉ डेटा विद द ओनली डिफरेंस बीइंग दैट द फ्रीक्वेंसी एफ इज इंसर्टेड इन द फार्मूला एज यू सॉ इन अर्लियर केसेज सो as you now see on the screen the rth moment about the mean is given by sigma f into x minus x bar whole raised to r over n and the rth moment about alpha is given by sigma f into x minus alpha whole raised to r over n students in the case of the frequency distribution of a continuous variable you will recall that x represents the midpoints of the classes and as i explained in an earlier lecture uh, this assumption that all the values lying in a particular class are equal to the midpoint of the class this introduces a certain amount of error and that is called grouping error shayad aapko yaad hoga ki maine aapse kaha tha ki in the case of the arithmetic mean uh, this error is not significant and it can be ignored but students in the case of the variance and the higher moments um this error becomes quite important and it is advisable to 
apply some sort of a correction for this error. W. F. Shepard has introduced certain corrections which are known as Shepard's corrections for grouping error. And as you now see on the screen, the Shepard's corrections are given by the formula A. M2 corrected is equal to M2 uncorrected minus H square over 12. M3 corrected is the same thing as M3 uncorrected. In other words, the third moment about the mean does not need any correction. And M4 corrected is equal to M4 uncorrected minus H square over 2 into M2 uncorrected plus 7 over 2 40 times H raised to 4. All these corrections are valid in the case of frequency distributions of continuous variables and these distributions should be of the form that they should tail off to 0 at each end. It is to be noted that in all these formulae H will represent the uniform class interval. Shepard's corrections ko hum abhi thodi der ke baad ek example pe apply karenge. Usse pehle students I would like to convey to you the mathematical relationships that exist between the moments about the mean and the moments about alpha. As you now see on the screen m1 is equal to 0 as stated earlier, m2 is equal to m2 dash minus m1 dash whole square, m3 is given by m3 dash minus 3 times m2 dash into m1 dash plus twice m1 dash whole cubed and m4 is equal to m4 dash minus m3 dash into m1 dash plus 6 times m2 dash into m1 dash square minus 3 times m1 dash raised to 4. Students, I will not be discussing the mathematical derivation of these relationships in this course. But of course, if any of you is interested, you are welcome to study the mathematics behind these formulae. And they are very much in your own textbook. What I would like to discuss with you is that there is an easy way of remembering these relationships which will be useful to you when you would like to compute the moments for real life data sets. As you now see on the screen, the two points to remember are number one, in each of these relations, the sum of the coefficients of the various terms on the right hand side equals zero. And number two, each term on the right is of the same dimension as the term on the left. All right, let us now apply all these concepts to an example. Suppose that we have data regarding the marks obtained by students in a test. The total marks were 20 and the students are obtaining marks between 5 and 15. The number of students obtaining these marks are 1, 2, 5, 10 and so on. Suppose that we are interested in computing the first four moments about the mean for this data. If we wish to do so directly, the first step is to compute x bar. And for this data set students, x bar comes out to be 10.06. Now the point is that x bar equal to 10.06, this is not a very convenient number to work with because in all those columns that you have to construct, x minus x bar, x minus x bar square, cubed and fourth power, they will involve a lot of decimals. So what we do is that first we uh, uh, compute the moments about alpha where alpha is a convenient number to work with 
and then we utilize those relationships that I conveyed to you to compute the moments about the mean. So in this example, we consider alpha equal to 10, which is the x value against the maximum frequency 51. And using this number, we construct the column of capital D, which is the same thing as x minus 10. By doing so, we obtain minus 5, minus 4, minus 3, and so on. And then multiplying this column by f, we obtain fd. Similarly, we obtain fd square, fd cubed, and fd raised to 4. Dividing the sums of these columns by 131, the total number of students, we obtain m1 dash, m2 dash, m3 dash, and m4 dash, as you see on the screen. Applying the relationships that exist between moments about the mean and moments about alpha, we obtain m2 equal to 2.64, m3 equal to 0 0.08, and m4 equal to 28.30. Applying the Shepard's corrections for grouping error, m2 corrected comes out to be 2.56, M3 corrected is the same as M3 uncorrected and M4 corrected comes out to be 27.01. Students, hum pichle 10-15 minutes se moments ki baate kar rahe hain. Aur aap yakeenan ye soch rahe honge ke after all, why are we going through all these lengthy calculations? The reason is that as I said earlier, moments give you a lot of information about your distribution. And in this connection, I will now introduce the concept of moment ratios. And once we are through that, you will be able to understand clearly what the important role of moments is in describing a frequency distribution. Ye jo maine moment ratios ki baat ki, isse murad wo quantities hain jin mein both the numerator and the denominator consist of moments and the most important moment ratios are B1 and B2 and as you now see on the screen, B1 is given by M3 square over M2 cubed and B2 is equal to M4 over M2 square. Both of these quantities are pure numbers and B1 is used to measure the skewness of the distribution whereas B2 is used to measure the kurtosis or the peakedness of the distribution. Aye, pehle B1 pe concentrate karte hain. Students, it has been mathematically shown that for a symmetrical distribution, B1 will be equal to zero but for skewed distributions, B1 will be positive. So in any data set, if your B1 comes out to be zero or approximately zero, you can conclude that your distribution is approximately symmetric. Agar B1 zero ke barabar nahi hai, this means that the distribution is skewed. Now, as far as the direction of skewness is concerned, students, you should look at the sign of the third moment about the mean, that is M3. If M3 is a positive number, it means that your distribution is positively skewed. If M3 is negative, it implies that the distribution is negatively skewed. B1 jo hai, that is m3 square over m2 cubed or squaring ki wajah se b1 to bahar hal positive hi aega. Next, let's talk about b2. Um, it has been mathematically proved that for the normal distribution, which is neither very peaked nor very flat, b2 is equal to 3 
And students, therefore, this number three acts as the basis for us to decide whether our distribution is leptochaotic, mesochaotic, or platychaotic. If for any data set, your B2 comes out to be equal to three, you can say that your distribution is like the normal curve, the bell-shaped curve, which is neither very peaked nor flat. But if your B2 comes out to be greater than three, this implies that your distribution is leptochaotic. That is the one which is more peaked than the normal distribution. And if your B2 comes out to be less than three, then your distribution is flat, that is platycaotic. Students, B1 or B2 ki discussion se aap pe ye vaze ho jana chahiye that the third moment and the fourth moment play a very important role in indicating the skewness and the kurtosis of your distribution. After all, M3 occurs in the numerator of B1 and M4 is in the numerator of B2. What about the dispersion and the center of your distribution? Do you not remember that a short while ago I indicated to you that the second moment about the mean is none other than the variance and the positive square root of the variance is the standard deviation, the most important measure of dispersion. What about the center? You will be interested to realize that the first moment about zero is none other than the arithmetic mean. After all, how will you define the first moment about zero? Sigma x minus zero over n, which is exactly the same as sigma x over n, the arithmetic mean. So in this manner, students, moments indeed play a very, very important role in describing frequency distributions. Next time, I will discuss with you quite a different and a very interesting concept, the concept of correlation and regression. In the meantime, I would like to encourage you to practice all these formulae that you have learned today and to make yourself at home with the concept of moments. Best of luck and Allah Hafiz.